All right, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a little different. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what it's like in 2024 in this era with uh, flipping lawnmowers. Here you got, you can see a couple I just picked up, uh, an MTD and a Craftsman. And then over here, here's an older John Deere that I picked up. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting what's going to happen with these two machines. And a little bit later, we're going to look at this again and see why is this sitting in my yard? This looks like a, a fairly new machine. You know, how did I end up with it? Well, this is the kind of things that happen in this day and age with riding mowers. So on these two here, they, these both need engines, both of these. On this Troy Bill here, MTD, this has the famous Kohler Courage engine in it. This engine's locked up, it won't turn. And uh, what I'm getting at here is, you know, this is getting to be a pretty common thing. This tractor is in really nice condition, otherwise, the seat's perfect on it, the deck is good, you know, the hood's not even messed up or anything. The mower's a little dirty, you know, they just didn't wash it or whatever. But, uh, you know, how do you fix something like that? Where do you get an engine at? And on this Craftsman here, this is a T2400. This one is the, basically the same thing. The seat's perfect on it. The hood's nice, not broken up. This engine is uh, the Briggs & Stratton, 19 horsepower. Now, apparently this one doesn't need a cam, but the connecting rod is not connecting anymore. I turned it, it has no compression. Even though the spark plug's out, you don't hear any air moving. So, you know, how do you do this in 2024? You know, how do you, how do you fix these things? Where do you get an engine at? So I've noticed more and more on Marketplace that you'll see guys that list tractors like this with a really low price and it'll say for parts or, or parting out. And sometimes they say engine sold, which, you know, it had a good engine. They decided to get their money out of that. And other times they're selling it because the engine's already bad. Uh, you know, they're just trying to find some way to, to get some money out of it. But and doing it that way, eventually you're going to end up with a shell that you, you know, take to the scrapyard or whatever. It's going to be hard to move around. But is that where this kind of business is going? You know, reselling lawn equipment, it's harder and harder to sell it ready to go because you just can't find the, the engines, I think. You know, leave some comments, you know, share some information. What solutions have you guys come across that, you know, you can still move this equipment? Now on this John Deere over here, I drove this one off my trailer. This thing is really old. Overall, this one's actually not in too bad a condition. This is the tractor that's is going to be the easiest one to fix. The deck belt's off of it, so that's got to get put on and figure out why it came off. Of course, this has a Kawasaki engine in it. You know, those engines are better than most of the other ones but as old as this tractor is it's actually in pretty good shape it was, looks like it was taken care of pretty good but out of these three riding mowers you know two really nice ones that would be easy to sell you clean them up they're, they're modern looking you know those styles are still basically being sold in the stores yet you know they, they look similar to these as opposed to something that's pretty old and could be problematic, you know, but this is an easy one to fix. Where do you get an engine at? You know, I've noticed the last couple years, you know, it, it's been coming. But most of the riding mowers I get that are less than 20 years old, the engines are almost the first thing to go on most of them. You know, sometimes the transmission goes bad. This Craftsman has, has a plastic transmission that's, the seal's popped out. Leaking. But, uh, you know, leave a comment. Where do you get an engine at? When that's the first thing to go bad. Back when I started doing this, almost 20 years ago, I've been doing this for a long time, 
most of what I got was flatheads. You know, those things went forever. Now they, you know, since then they've gone to this overhead valve and tried to get more and more horsepower out of these engines and it's, it's too much. They cut back on the engineering. They, they make them cheaper than they used to and they fly apart. You know, how, how do you guys deal with this kind of situation where you get nice tractors and if I get five tractors, three of them probably are going to need an engine. You know, the, the challenge for me is, you know, which ones do I fix? I take a, tra a, a motor out of one that looks okay and put it in one that's going to be a higher price model. You're still leaving stuff on the table because you got a nice machine that you can't repower. Unless you put an old flathead in it. Let's go look in the back and see what couple that I have back there. So here in the backyard, I have this Husky that I've been saving for a while. It actually has a horizontally opposed two-cylinder flathead engine in it. I have my ladder on it, so I'm not going to open the hood. But, uh, you know, that's a, got a pretty old-style engine in it. The tractor itself isn't that old. It might be 20 years old now. And here I have the another Craftsman. This one's a YTS 3000. They like going to those fancy letters and extravagant numbers. Uh, you know, this one's kind of had a hard life. The transmission's falling out of this. The seat's completely shot. I got this one from someone I know. I put a head gasket on this a couple years ago. I put a battery in this. This, this engine still runs good. It started right up. Didn't knock or anything. You know, but in today's world, even with a Briggs like this, you got to be a little leery about selling it. That, uh, you know, how long is it going to last for the customer after you sell it? I've already had those where I pulled the engine out and put another one in because the cam went bad and it wouldn't start. You know, that's the other thing. Even if it doesn't throw the rod, there's a good chance that the cam's going to go bad. You know? So, what do you do? You get a cam off of Amazon and hope that it works? I haven't done that yet. You know, I, I used to put cams in a long time ago. It's not all that difficult, but you're wrapping your time up in it. And uh, from what I've heard, unless you get a Briggs & Stratton branded cam, you're really taking your chances. You could give it back to the customer and they might call you the next time they try to cut grass. Say, hey, it's doing it again. Now you might as well just buy it back from them. So over here is another Craftsman. I've had this one for a while. I never got around to finishing it. This is a YTS 4000. I got this. The deck belt that was on it was way too small. And uh, they couldn't get it started because it was trying to turn the deck over at the same time. Now this one, a 24 horsepower V-Twin. This one actually still runs. Nothing flew apart on this yet. So, I, you know, I got lucky there. But uh, eventually this tractor is going to be cutting grass again. This is one of the few where the engine's not bad. You know, and then I got this John Deere here where the brakes don't work on it. The, the person I got it from said that the, the engine blew. And it turns out the engine blew because it smokes after a while which is pretty common on these brigs you know the head gaskets go bad that's not a real big deal you could almost change them with your eyes closed anymore but it did start right up it ran okay I drove it on my trailer but they said the engine started smoking for them you know that that's good for guys like us because that's usually not a big deal so this is one of the few where you know th this one and that one that these are going to be fixable because the, the engines aren't blown yet. But, you know, like I said earlier, you, you kind of got to be weary about selling these anymore. I've been lucky, but the last eight, ten months, I haven't sold very many. It kind of got slow for me last fall, 
and uh, I was I ended up wholesaling a lot of stuff and I'm fine with wholesaling something that's got a Kohler Courage even if it runs now over here this is off a Craftsman garden tractor this is actually a Kohler a V-twin Kohler like a 22 23 horsepower and uh, it installed a vent hole all by itself so this engine is just bad I, it could have been run low in oil it's probably 20 years old you know, so something like this is forgivable once in a while. These engines generally aren't too bad. But uh, getting back to the Kohler Courage, like was in the engine out, the tractor out front. And back to these Kohler Courage engines. These started, I think, around 17 horsepower and went up to 20 or somewhere around there this one's a 19 uh, I've sold these running and I sell them with a disclaimer I tell the people if you do any research on this engine you're not going to be happy but I've had these with a hundred hours that had about four different things wrong with it namely the block cracks under here because the top cover of the engine underneath the flywheel the bolts come loose and then you got your cylinder pulsing and flexing the, the aluminum block and uh, they crack and I've had it that that same one less than a hundred hours the flywheel was, was loose on the shaft the top cover was loose the bolts were backed out against the flywheel it still ran but it, it wasn't long for this world and I've had these that had 400 hours on them already on ones that had an hour meter and they didn't have any of those problems, but you know, there, there might have been a couple Wednesday engines out there where the people were actually focused on working and tightened up everything and, and they lasted. But uh, I think they have uh, some design problems on these. So they did away with that Kohler Courage name. They don't call them a Courage anymore. I forget what they call them, but it's. Here's a picture of the new Kohlers, and uh, that 5400 series, that's the size of the engine somehow, and they change that number depending on engine size. It's on all the newer engines, but I don't know how much different they are. You know, it used to be you could uh, take out that Kohler Courage and put an overhead valve single Briggs in there, but now they're getting harder and harder to find that they still work and uh, you know it's a shame those Kohler Courage they were in all these MTDs you know, like this Troy built they were in the Cub Cadets they were in Husqvarna you know a lot of those nice tractors they, they had that engine in them I've had a lot of them with bad engines and uh, where do you get a good Kohler Courage to put in this place so you know the focus of this video, like I said before, is uh, yeah, how do you do it in 2024? Now, how, do you, how do you flip mowers like this when the power plant is the biggest problem anymore? You know, some of them, I don't like the way they do the steering where they have two steering arms going out to the axle because there's no adjustment for tow. And you start to get some wear. And uh, then you can't see, you know, you can't. What the heck happened to my zoom here? There we go, that's better. Got a little out of focus there. So, somebody had made a comment about, do a video about what's in my yard. Well, right now, this is what I have. Never mind the little ATV here. That's, I got that special for someone. Here's a uh, leaf collector that I got. And I've used it already. I haven't been able to, to move it on yet. But uh, that's a nice big box, and it works real good. And over here, I got this thing. I picked it up just to help the people out it was in this condition when I got it it's really not good for anything so this will go 
most likely this is going to go to scrap somewhere. It's got a couple engine parts on it. No gear on the starter. It's really uh, not even worth its weight in steel. So here's a Cub Cadet that I got last year in 2023. And uh, this thing looks almost like new yet. This is an XT1 model. I believe they sell the XT2. You know, there's, there's no wear on this thing anywhere. And there's the newer Kohler engine that's not the Courage anymore. It's actually a different casting when you look at them. And, the, you know, there you can see XT1. The, the thing's like brand new. Seven and a half hours on this engine, on this whole tractor. And there you can see what happened. You know, even if... I, I don't think this would have ran low in oil in seven and a half hours. I didn't see oil thrown out anywhere. So you might think, why wasn't this fixed under warranty? There's a good chance that this tractor just aged out of the warranty period, and that's how I ended up with it. But I have heard of this happening to other of these Cub Cadet XT1s. And, uh, you know, not to pick on Cub Cadet, they didn't build the engine. But, uh, you know, is this where we're headed? That it's just going to be really, really hard to sell a complete machine? You know, like I said earlier, leave some comments and... You know, maybe some of you guys have a solution and maybe you don't want to share. But, uh, you know, it's going to be harder for everybody going forward. And I've seen this coming for a couple years now.